What stranger will you never forget? When my wife and I first started dating. We were walking into a Trader Joe's holding hands. This elderly woman looks at us and says rather loudly cute couple alert. My wife and I still laugh about it. It's been 12 years at least. When I was in elementary school I fell through ice. A man who was walking his dog saw me fall and rushed to the shore. I frantically swam back to the shore. I was only about 5 meters into the pond so it wasn't a long way. But it took some with soaked winter clothes. When I reached the shore. The man pulled me up by my jacket. It would have been difficult to get up. As there was a steep incline. I didn't thank him. Because I was in shock. But I bet he knows I was grateful. And 20 years later I still hope I would had thanked him. I was doing tech support and my customer was so happy with my service she offered to marry me to her daughter. I politely declined. I was waiting for my appointment with an optometrist when an old Haitian man walked in with a grocery bags. Thai receptionist knew him so he walked up to me and proceeded to ask me riddles. When I finally got the answer to one he reached into his bag and gave me a Snickers then left. To this day I'm really curious as to what would motivate a man to become a wholesome riddler. The gentleman in a business suit handing me his umbrella in the middle of a downpour. We just were passing each other on the sidewalk. Our eyes met and he just handed over the umbrella with a here ya go. Never saw him ago. I had a similar encounter. When my oldest was a toddler. He went to daycare in the downtown area of our city. We took the bus. Then the subway and then walked to daycare. Didn't have a car. Then I'd get back on the subway for a few stops to go to work. One afternoon. It was pouring. I'm by myself. Holding a 2 euro. His backpack. My work bag and trying to book it 4 city blocks to the subway station. No hands left for an umbrella. A businessman. Prob a high price lawyer. Based on the area, walked us all the way to the entrance of the subway station. Holding an umbrella over us the whole time. I encountered a lot of nastiness commuting with a kid that year. But we also met with random kindness from strangers too. The foreign exchange student and his parents who walked past my park bench on campus and dropped his passport. I chased after them to return it and his mom started screaming at me in broken English like why you have his papers? Why you steal his papers? While the kid and his father looked like they were going to die from embarrassment. I was on a tram and I didn't have a ticket and the ticket inspectors came on. I got asked to have my ticket seen and I said I couldn't find it on me and he said he'll come back so I can look for it. There was a stranger sat on the seat behind me who had a ticket. He gave it to me and he got off at the next stop. Guy gave me his ticket so I wouldn't be issued a fine. I am a ticket inspector and believe me, we know people are doing this. And if I turn around. I do it so you can get the stranger's ticket. I was in the university library with a really bad cold. Super tired and wanting to go home but desperately studying for my upcoming exams really late at night. I thought I was alone. But a stranger came by my desk with an unopened pack of strepsils. He then told me my health was the most important thing I would have on this earth and walked away before I could process what had just happened. I wanted to thank him for his kindness but I never saw him again. An Irish guy, not in Ireland, who spoke with such a strong accent that I couldn't make out a single word. To this day I question whether it was just a prank. I was at a pool bar at a resort in Jamaica. A British lady next to me asked me the most random question. Which turned into a nearly 3 hour conversation. The question. What is a redneck? It was a lot more difficult to explain than I thought it would be. I didn't realize that was an unknown concept to a lot of Brits. I was fiddling with my camera on a train platform in Melbourne, Australia. Trying to take an artsy shot of the trains or something. I noticed through my viewfinder a guy about my age, early 20s or so at the time, full on flipping me off on the train on the opposite platform. I lowered my camera. Laughing. And flipped him off back. He laughed. The train started to pull away. And I waved. And he waved back. 
Australia. I was driving down south with my girlfriend. We have a blowout so I put on the donut. The donut blows out while we're exiting the very next exit. So though we are maybe 19 and at least 100 miles from anyone we know at a gas station in the middle of nowhere. I'm thinking on what to do next. And probably looked like there was something wrong so this older man offered to help. He drives me 20 or so minutes to a junkyard to get a cheap tire. Then he puts the tires on the rim with no more than a pry bar and some soapy water. Had a compressor on his truck so he aired it up and I put it on. And we went on our way. When I was younger. I went grocery shopping with my dad. As we were walking. An old man stopped us and handed both me and my sister a shiny $1 coin. He told us that he wanted us to have them and to have a Merry Christmas. I never saw him again. But I think of that kind old man from time to time. When I was super overweight. I was just starting to work out somewhat regularly. Being morbidly obese at the gym is terrible, I have never felt more eyes on me before in my life. I was on a treadmill. Grinding out some inclined walk light jogging. And a super fit girl got on the machine next to me. This was all pre-covered. She did a short warm up. And before she got off the treadmill she turned to me and gave me a high five and told me to keep it up. It was so encouraging to have that support. When I was used to getting stared at by everyone else in the gym. Her small. Kind gesture went a long way. The lady who told me I looked great in blue. And that it was clearly my color. To this day if I'm deciding between shirts to buy. Or wear. I'll go with blue. That compliment was about 15 years ago at least. There are a few. The biggest one was when I was homeless and asked a lady for the time. She told me and asked if I wanted to share her sandwich in the paper. She was the first person to treat me like a person. Like I was worth something in years. I never got her name but I will remember her fondly for the rest of my life. I know that she'll never. Ever know what a difference she made in my life. Just that one simple thing she did and the humanity she showed me changed my life. I got sober just a few days later and completely turned my life around. One person. One smile. One kindness that you may never think of again in your life can change someone else's life beyond measure. My lost wallet was returned in the mail. The anonymous stranger sent it back at their own expense. $9. 75 postage. With all the money. Credit cards. Driver's license. And other items intact. Nothing was missing. A note enclosed read. Please do something kind for a stranger whenever you have the opportunity. In college. I was dating a girl. I really loved her. But I realized that we were incompatible and we had to break up. So I downed a handle of vodka by myself in my dorm. I was drunk as FCK. But still feeling shtty. So I decided to head to the bars and drink some more. I actually don't remember if I made it there or not. But I remember getting off the bus from having come from the bars and was too wasted to continue the relatively short walk to my dorm. I decided to just lay down where I was at. Which was quite literally the gutter next to the railing. Luckily it was an empty gutter. But a gutter nonetheless. This complete bro dude comes by and sees me laying in the gutter and helps me up. He helps me walk back to my dorm and on the struggle there he asks me what's wrong. I explained the situation. I don't remember much of anything from the conversation. But I do remember him saying something to the effect of bro. Your problems aren't gonna be solved at the bottom of a bottle. Took a train to Nick by myself for the first time. I was 18. Second time to Nick. First time ever on a train. I told the kiosk lady that I'd never been on a train before and asked if she might give me a quick rundown of what to do. Another train station employee was nearby and was so interested and amused that I was taking a train for the first time and was alone. He walked me through what to do. Down to the smallest detail. No judgment. No meanness. He was just a guy with a silly disposition. Delighting in a young person's naivety breaking up the doldrums of his week. I aspire to be that way when people ask me for help. Thanks. Frank P. You are a peach. 
My dad is a truck driver. At the time he was probably about 55-56. It was a long time ago I can't remember, and we were waiting for a train to pass. So there was then this black guy that looked rather homeless and he knocked on the glass of our truck and he said something along the lines of can I give you something for your grandson? And pulls out this model freight train. I was by myself in a restaurant bathroom with my screaming newborn baby. As his cries intensified. I started to crumble knowing that we somehow had to walk all the way through the massive restaurant as the bathroom was tucked away in the back. A woman close to my age walked in. I apologized for the crying. And she immediately smiled and responded with don't even worry about it. On her way out. She walked up to me and my baby and asked if this was my first. I responded with a yes. She was not a mom herself. But immediately became empathetic to my situation. After a few minutes of conversation. I told her that I was nervous about walking my crying baby through the busy restaurant. She looked at me and said let's get you out of here. She then opened the door and walked behind me softly rooting me on all the way back to my table. She had no idea how much I needed her in that moment and I'm forever grateful. My son was a week old. And had to go to the doctor. I had severe early onset postpartum depression. And I hadn't slept more than an hour at a time since his birth. I locked my keys. Phone. And son in the car. This incredibly wonderful older couple calmed me down. Called CAA. Parked beside my car and sat with me until the tow truck came and unlocked the car. The tow driver refused payment. I will never forget those three people. I was walking on the street and a person came to me and said if I had any money. I gave him some. He looked at the money. Told me it was sinful. And returned it to me. It was really weird. The money was my hard earned money. Was on a solo trip to Amsterdam last year. Partying it up as one does. Was at a bar having a few drinks. And a gorgeous British woman a seat or two over from me, mid 20s, grabs my arm. I'm a very gay looking man by the way, and starts going on about how good it is to see me. I got the hint and noticed an older guy bothering her and her friend. Played along with them as their long lost BFF until he left. We ended up spending the rest of the night bar crawling and getting trashed together. Having the best time. I'll never forget you B. I'm a small lady and was at a thrift shop once and a homeless man was following me and was asking to touch my hair. A stranger man came out of nowhere and said ready babe. Let's go check out. He walked me to the door and we went our separate ways. Real hero right there. Few years ago. I was stopping at a red light and there was an old man selling candy. He approached my car and I was ready to tell him I didn't want anything. But he motioned me to roll my window down. Gave me a lollipop and some gum. And said to the beautiful young lady. Never forget you're a star and walked away before I could say anything. Needless to say he brightened my day. Now. Whenever I'm sad. I think about that man telling me I'm a star. Never fails to cheer me up. The woman who pulled over in the pouring rain and talked me down off the railing of a bridge over a Florida highway when I was 18. She looked like she had just left a business meeting. But she stayed with me for probably an hour. No umbrella. No raincoat. Car still running. Listening to me. Offering words of encouragement. She truly believed that God had a plan for my life and it wasn't supposed to end that night. She finally convinced me that suicide was a permanent solution to a temporary problem. I'm 51 now. I still haven't figured out what God's plan is for me. But I'm starting to believe she was right. When I was at a bus stop once about 4 or 5 years ago. A nervous looking man asked me what time his bus came and informed me he was going for an interview. I told him the time. Wished him luck and then my bus came and I never saw him again. The reason he stuck out to me was because he reminded me of that part in Roald Dahl's The Twits. Where he said that even if a person is ugly. If they think happy thoughts the happiness shines out of their face and they will always look lovely. This man was extremely ruddy. Had a large moustache and very large teeth. But he was so polite that his positivity shone out of him. 
A man at Walmart around the holidays a few years ago paid our bill of over $200. It was at a time where we were struggling to make ends meet. So the timing could not have been any better. A prisoner on a Greyhound bus. There were two of them. But I remember one specifically. Apparently. They send prisoners who are transferring from max to minimum security on Greyhound buses. They didn't have a guard or anything. And from what she said. They had no motivation at all to run. He had already served 5 years. And only had 6 months left. If she tried to run. She would serve at least 10 more years. I was 17 and pregnant. And completely broke. I was starving and scared. My life was in shambles. And everyone in my family had abandoned me. She bought me food and was kind to me. She was old enough to be my mother. And I really wished she was. She didn't judge me. She just bought me food and drinks and offered kind words. I really wish I could find her and repay her kindness. I was in the laundry with my dog and an old man with his dog approached. Our pets met and the man said when Jessus is say to love your neighbor as you love yourself. Only the dogs understood it after that we had in small chat. Then he left and I have never seen him again. I went down to a veterinarian pharmacy I had never gone to about a year ago in the summer. I had a lot of time to wait for the prescription to be filled, first time customer. So I couldn't call ahead, and so I went to the nearby shopping village. They had a public piano there. I've played piano since childhood and recently tried to sing and play at the same time. Knowing that nobody knew me around. I started to play and sing American Pie cause who cares. A woman was just walking by and stopped and started singing harmony. Also started up piano man and she sang along with that as well. We sang and played together for a good 15 minutes before I had to return, but that was just a spontaneously magical encounter. I learned she used to sing at clubs. And I told her I used to play in jazz bands. We had a good time together. And I doubt we'll see each other again, but I'll never forget her. Went on a 3 day trip to Berlin and saw two women having a heated argument. It ended with one of them doing a cartwheel and throwing up her mid left fingers. Then running away. A fine young man on the bus I took to Orlando. So SY. And we started talking as we waited for the last long leg to Orlando. We talked in line as we got on the bus. And sat next to each other the whole time. Just talking and even flirting a bit. He was funny and thoughtful. But we knew we were just passing the time. Still. We talked so candidly during those last few hours that it made a real impression on me. We didn't exchange numbers or anything. But we both wished each other the best as he got off the stop before mine. I don't even remember his name and probably wouldn't know him if I saw him. But I remember the feeling of talking with him and... Weirdly enough. Even miss him. Hope he's alright. I know this will be lost to the comments. But I cannot forget this lady. I was the closing cashier at a grocery store when a very tired looking lady came through. I'll never forget what she got because she got a steak and some seafood and a frozen bag of Arby's fries. I was just trying to make light conversation and said something along the lines of looks like a good time. And she just in a hollow voice told me that it was the first thing she was going to eat in days because her son had just passed away and this is a meal he would have liked. I talked to the lady and found out more about her son. He was around my age and had died of cancer. She went on her way but would come back to my register when I was working. When I left. I told her it was my last day and she asked me for a hug. Never saw her again but I think of her when I see Arby's rise and hope that she is doing okay.